today I'm going to tell you about a solution for OS to duplication. So um, the project is called, um, I think I feel like saying CIDIS, but I think you should say CIDIS. Uh, I mean, it's not a real world, but you know, just like Linux. So uh, it stands for a single instance distributing universal system. It's not my work. All the credit really goes to my collaborator, Emmanuel Kemener, who is based in Lyon, France. And he um, works at a, an HPC center, so high performance computing center. He is a sysadmin and a research engineer. Uh, he's very, very technical and uh, has been teaching me quite a few things. And uh, I was interested in this project initially uh, as uh, an academic that I was um, in the scope of reproducible science. And we applied uh, uh, at SciPy 2013 uh, and we got selected. So tonight this is, you're like a test audience for me. Uh, I'm practicing my talk that I will give um, the week of the 24th of June. So uh, the idea is to run a given OS uh, on several, many stations. So really just like you're used to, uh, you know, having a given virtual end for, for your project or for a given workshop when you're teaching students, then uh, you want to control your experiments. So the runs that you're uh, doing as, as a scientist, for instance, um, and, and know what your OS is. And knowing that in practice, it's, it's Debian with all the base packages and, uh, and Python and the scientific Python libraries, because we, we think that's the, good, the right, the proper environment for doing uh, scientific research. Uh, so the context, yeah, is typically uh, with cluster nodes, but it can be a park of workstations that you manage or administer. Uh, administrate, uh, don't administer. Um, or it can be, uh, you know, like a computer room for students or something, uh, a self-service, a bunch of self-service stations. So the idea is that uh, you will have the uh, OS stored remotely, but uh, you still use the local resources. So it's not a terminal. You really, and you can actually, sig you can u make full use of the local resources of your Work, local workstation, uh, but you can also like choose the ones you, you want to use, so you can segment those at will. But the amount of the you completely reduce the amount of storage needed for the OS because this is taken care of remotely. So just to motivate uh, again the the reason for such a project, so it can have applications in in the context of teaching when uh, you know, instead of emailing your students the day before, please install this and have this running and with this given version, then you're just able to deploy uh, a given OS. Um, and you have the flexibility of updating it, uh, changing the configuration. Um, you can test new equipment without going through installing an OS on it. Um, and you can probe corrupted equipment, uh, like if it's not booting by itself properly, then you do it over the network. And uh, I'm focusing on the uh, what's at stake for reproducible science, so uh, making sure that things run the same way, quantitatively and qualitatively, on um, on cluster nodes in this context. So HPC nodes are. People always tell you they are a clone of each other. So yeah, typically they do have, they're identical and they have the same OS locally installed and it's identical. But over time, you, you never really keep this identity. And uh, the point with, with Citus is that you, whenever you reboot, you will just reset and everything will be identical again. And you can run your, just like you know, you control a biology experiment while well, you control a numerical experiment. Um, then there's an issue, um, it's not on my slide, but about persistence. Like let's say you really like your configuration and uh, when you reboot, you don't want to erase and like lose the, um, everything that you set. And uh, I would not be able to explain you technically how it works, but it's something with the, uh, I S C S I storage space um, and uh, the documentation is uh, available. I'll, I'll give you the link at the end of the presentation. So um, the I'll jump into an application 
to talk about some Python as well. And um, the idea was to consider, uh, well, not just the idea, the, the practice, what, what happened, uh, was to take 20 stations um, interconnected. So uh, you have 10 pairs uh, client server um, using two configurations, but I'm showing you only one here. Uh, and running three sets of experiments, so like on three different days. Um, and because this is Montreal Python and because I, that's my language, uh, I decided to you know, do an IPython notebook for this presentation and to uh, analyze those data because I'm really not a sysadmin, I'm a data analyst. Um, so you... I mean, this uh, Julia taught you, I think, a few months, a couple months ago. So uh, I can go fast, right? <laughs> um, but you import pandas. I'm, I am learning stats models. I, I saw Mr. Stats models here. Exactly. So I am jumping into it right now because I'm seeing the limitations of pandas, and I really need to do uh, some uh, regressive models and all. So uh, don't worry. I'm, I realize uh, I really need to go to stats models. Um, so uh, the CSV, so X2 is the given configuration, 09 is the, the day. So we'll consider 10 and 11 as the second and third ex experiment. Um, so we have uh, all these columns. Um, Dest at SRC identifies the um, given uh, pair, the given client server pair. So uh, there's going to be like, uh, 10, uh, 11 with 1, 12 with 2, 13 with 3, etc. cetera. Um, all these um, attributes uh, qualify the performance uh, because that, that's what we were interested in evaluating. So um, uh, there are like speeds like kilobytes uh, per second for writing, for uh, rewriting, for reading, et cetera. Um, that's what's in the data. Uh, actually describe yield the same thing as as head here uh, and it yields a different thing when you uh, add uh, parentheses but anyway uh, so first uh, th so the attribute right for um, the first uh, pair of given client with given server uh, has those numbers so um, it's uh, it's in kilobytes per second and it's like uh, running it like at once, so it's like one experiment, but like several times, so it's, I consider it a time series, right? And, oops, how do I scroll down? So I, I plotted for every, every line is for every client server pair. Um, and uh, we see huge discrepancies. I could have shown you like, not like going into detail, but what is the, the test script that's run because it's in Python. Oh no, I cannot go there, right? Can I? Control C, Control V. Uh, so it's a Python script, but it has a lot of bash in it. But um, still, it's Python. <laughs> so all these tests for reading, writing, and anyways. So here we have like huge di dispersion variability because so. Um, well, all, all these client server pairs seem to go all together, but uh, those two are, well, completely off. And also within a given client server pair, you have lots of variability, like look at the blue line uh, to go a little more, um, to represent this variability in another way. Like I decided to show you a box plot for, uh, so all the attributes, uh, write, rewrite, et cetera. <laughs> Uh, so um, only for the um, the first client server pair. Uh, so if we want to talk about statistics, uh, like my background is in not even proper statistics, but statistical physics. So um, that would be like statistics over time, uh, and and that oops, sorry. Uh, that would be statistics over time for uh, each line considered separately. And like here as well, because I'm considering like one client server pair. And if you, can, if you want to talk about the variability between the different lines, that would be like an ensemble, um, an ensemble statistics. 
So uh, there's like ergodicity ideas that I'm kind of fascinated with, but I haven't had time to dig into. Um, and um, because we used, um, well, my collaborator, Emmanuel, used um, Citus, he was able to control completely all the software. So this variability, where can it come from? So um, he was able to identify that was a, a hardware issue. Uh, something with the configuration. And uh, basically all your cluster nodes, like you need to set them to max performance so they perform in like a stable controlled way. So he did that and indeed then he could observe something with a lot less variability and higher performance, like we're using the same scale up to, uh, sorry, between this diagram. 1.2 to the uh, 10 to the power of 6. Same here, and same for their third set of experiment. So uh, am I plotting? Yeah, I'm, I'm plotting the box plot, and you see like this is squished. Variability is very much more uh, con under control. And I also decided to display um, the uh, basic statistical properties uh, with the function described for this time, uh, so the first pair client server um, and uh, the third experiment. Uh, so basically, if you want to use uh, an H, um, well, a, a cluster and really trust that your runs will perform this, well, will be treated the same way by all those nodes, uh, even if you're told they are clones, they have to be set in a max performance configuration to, to have this like actually similar behavior. Uh, and here we have some uh, work in progress for the documentation. Uh, I may or may not, uh, oops, takes time to load, eventually um, translate some into English. It's not that I'm lazy. There are different issues, like uh, we submitted a paper to Linux Journal and you know they keep it exclusive until they decide they will publish it or not. So I, I cannot just copy paste uh, whatever we already submitted. Um, but about documentation, I have a really funny thing I, I thought I would share with you. I was at Ada Camp uh, yesterday in uh, San Francisco. Uh, and at one of the uh, lightning talks, uh, the lady talking referred to documentation as spoiler. <laughs> so um, that <laughs> we had a really great laugh, but that's not going to help, you know, everyone who procrastinate about uh, writing documentation finally. Uh, to sum up, like qualitatively, um, some marketing for Citus. Uh, it's universal because all this is platform independent. It works on x86 and x86-64 architectures. It's efficient. Uh, the install, so you can go into the details for, um, you know, if you're sysadmin oriented and if you actually want to use it, uh, it takes a few minutes. We should make it like available uh, soon, like uh, I think it fits like on a maybe 16 gigabytes USB key. So um, it is scalable. It was tested successfully on 100 nodes. Um, it is multi-purpose, sorry, multi-purpose. We chose to go for Debian uh, because we thought it's the proper environment for, um, for scientific computing, but uh, possibly you can con consider something else. And um, yeah, I, I should have given results about the second configuration, but uh, I was doing this aboard the plane uh, last night. So I will do it by SciPy and we'll have more material. But thank you very much.